So I'm here today at Web Wheel with Alan. Alan, we are standing in front of this amazing line. You've got a whole line of watch-on machines. You've got really cool cranes set up. And, and I know you already gave me a tour, but let's go over for the people out there so we can show them just what blew me away this morning when we were talking about this. So we've got the VTLs right here. But where does this all start? Yep, so our process is pretty streamlined. The first thing we want to do is we paint the castings, the rough castings that come in from our suppliers. They're then delivered through these machine, these uh, conveyor networks to our machining sales. At that point, we're going to take and load the rough castings into the lays, the VT650 wash-ons that we've purchased. And we take these machines and machine the castings down to the blueprint specifications. What we're going to do inside the machines is we're going to machine the drums. We're also going to take and drill them. Uh, there will be some milling work as well. And then also the gauging that happens in there. 100% of our critical dimensions are gauged inside the machine to help us with our quality systems as well. So again, for us, we call it a one-stop shop. That's what we're trying to accomplish. And again, these wash-ons have been amazing tools for us here at Webb, providing that ability to be a one-stop shop for our uh, drum castings. A very, very, very great product so far for us and bulletproof as well. Now, Alan, you're being really, you're making it sound really, really simple, yep. but, but what you're not telling the people out there is you've got a fully automated solution that unloads those pallets and sends them off the paint. And then you've got this entire conveyor belt system that's running the whole length of your factory. So it's not like you have a bunch of people sitting there manually laboring over these pallets. You've got automation, you've got conveyor systems and then even here, you've got two separate cranes. Rather than just having a swing arm over there, you've got two separate cranes with exact tracks to put the raw ones in, right down in one, pull it out, comes out complete. Like you said, the one-stop shop, which I think is the capacity of these machines is just, the rigidity of these machines is absolutely crazy. Let's, let's see if we can pull on, on someone just to talk a little bit more to the rigidity and what it's like as a machinist, as an operator running these guys. All right, that sounds great. Yeah, perfect. So you've got Josh. I'm gonna give Josh this microphone. Josh, I was just talking to Alan about the machines and the whole process here. It's really cool, right? With the cranes and the automation and all of that. But what's it like as the man on the machine and you know, with all your offsets and your quality and everything that you've got to worry about here, what's that like for you? It's real simple. Every off, every cut we have has its own individual offset. So most of the time they don't move unless chipped an insert or something, machining. But for the most part, roll your inserts and it just runs. Yeah, and I mean, you're working with castings, chipping an insert and inclusion. There's all kinds of stuff that happens in the casting process. When it comes to the wear offsets, when it comes to the longevity, how much are you having to offset these machines throughout your shift? Not very often at all. No, Once we get it set, it hardly moves. Really? See, because I've run machines in the past where you do an offset, two parts later, you're like, nope, didn't work out. I'm going to tweak that a little more. I spend most of my day over here on the control, tweaking offsets up and down. But with here, you set it maybe once a shift, twice a shift? Yeah, usually the only time we have to make any adjustments, maybe when we set up, change part to part. Or if, like I said, we crash the tool, chip and insert, yeah, you know, something like that, get it back right, and then it stays there. I mean, you'll have some wear, fluctuate with intolerance, but for the most part, it doesn't move. That's absolutely fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Yes, sir. So, <laughs> we've got Alan back. We kicked Josh off the camera. Josh was just talking about how easy these are to maintain the offsets. He's telling me he might offset it maybe once a day unless he chips a tool. That's absolutely right. Again, the rigidity of the machines, like you had mentioned earlier, is very good. Again, that's one of the primary reasons we work, wanted to work with Wash On is the, is the design of the equipment they've got, not only just the operational side of it, but also our maintenance department has been truly excited with the rigidity of the machine, the protection of the machine, what it provides for us on our side. And again, we're about six years into this relationship, but again, they've been very bulletproof for us, especially on the maintenance side and easy to maintain. And not to mention any problems we might have had, Wash On has come to the table immediately to try to help us with any small problems we've had along the way. So after we're done on the machining, what happens after this to the parts? So our next step after the machining is they'll all get put on a central conveyor. At that point, they go to uh, our inspection station. All of our drums pass through an inspection station for visual uh, checks, both on the foundry side and here on our machining side to make sure everything's in line. 
to meet blueprint specifications. Past that, we go into balancing. Uh, and what we've used in the past is some balancers uh, that didn't incorporate VT650s. With the success of what we've seen with this machine, we've recently installed our first balancing cell that will incorporate the VT650 that I think we'll see later. Again, we're very excited about how we're going to utilize that machine moving forward in our balancing cells as well. After balancing, then they're moved to the finished product side uh, where they put finished labels on the product and then they're going to move to the warehouse. And again, with the uh, robustness of these machines and what we've seen with cycle times and uh, the throughput capacity of these new machines, uh, 650s, we're getting product to the warehouse available to ship to customers in about 45 minutes here on this mid-volume line, which is very amazing for us. Yeah, and so for the people out there watching, that's 45 minutes from coming off the skid to going back on a skid in your warehouse. That's correct. That's all the way through your whole process. Yes, sir. That is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for your time, Alan. Very welcome. Thank you for being Thank here. You.